A man whose words expressed the anger of so many died this morning after someone booby-trapped his car with a bomb. His name, Samir Kassir. He was a Lebanese journalist known for his anti-Syrian views, writing in a country where emotions run high over the influence of Syria on the Lebanese government. Joining me from New York to talk about this is MSNBC analyst and senior diplomatic correspondent for Al Hayat newspaper, Rahida Dergam. She uh, personally knew this journalist, Samir Kassir, saw him last week. And Rahida, I'm sorry for your loss. Thank you. That's very kind of you. I know that he was an outspoken journalist, that he did a lot of writing about Syria and why it should not have an influence on Lebanese politics. Why do you think someone would want to kill him? Because he was an outspoken journalist, because he really cared about the independence of Lebanon, a true independence, he also wrote against Lebanon being a police state under the government of President Emil Lahoud. He was very vocal against the security apparatus which has practically ruled Lebanon and really intimidated or tried to intimidate the media in a consistent manner. Samir Kassir refused intimidation and this cowardly act is actually an act to intimidate other journalists. That's why we need to stand up against it he, altogether. He was really murdered and was it something that he worried about ahead of time? Did he know that there were, gonna, that there were death threats against him? Uh, he may have known about death threats, but I tell you, he certainly did not take them seriously. I saw him a week ago uh, during the World Economic Forum at the Dead Sea in Jordan, and we were sitting together with his magnificent wife, and this, they have a great love story, actually. It's so sad that this happened to both of them. She's also a fellow journalist. And we were talking about what Lebanon is going through and uh, how many of the security apparatus, the Lebanese security apparatus, have fallen from grace, but they could be still revengeful, and how the intelligence, the Syrian intelligence, uh, has not really left fully Lebanon. And his, uh, what he thought is very simply that they wouldn't dare that they wouldn't dare assassinate somebody like him or because me. Because we, we saw this country just reeling after the assassination of its prime minister there. When that happened, there were hundreds of thousands of people who took to the streets and protested against the influence there for this well-known journalist to be assassinated in his own car like this. Are there, is there going to be protests, do you think, now? I think so. I think there's going to be a mobilization by the opposition. They're going to unite again, and the message is going to be that this environment has to be, uh, come to an end. If you would watch, uh, I've been in touch with people who are watching Arab television, and it seems that it's wall-to-wall -wall coverage of the assassination of my dear friend and colleague, Samir Qasir. And I think this will resonate. In, in a very st strong message to all concerned that yours is a cowardly act that is not going to win, that this act of intimidation is not going to be successful. R Rahida, he paid the highest price a journalist yes. can pay for doing hard work. What do you want people to know about him? How would he want to be remembered? Oh, with his great, wonderful smile, this wonderful smile and his courage. This was a courageous journalist, and um, I bow to him. Uh, Rahida Durgam. Again, we're so sorry for your loss, Thank and you. if you could pass that along to his family as well. That's MSNBC analyst and senior diplomatic correspondent for Al Hayat newspaper, Rahida Durgam. Alex? Hmm. I bow to him. That's very gracious.